Where do you want to be at the end of October? Can you imagine altcoins at fair value, right? Like you think you missed it, right? Oh my God, I missed it. 2021, this guy at the end of the bar is a millionaire and I missed it. You, you may not have. Matter of fact, there may be a huge rally between say October 29th and December 4th. So if the market is going to go parabolic to the upside, what has to happen first? They got to shake everybody out. And I mean everybody. The thing about Rocktober is it sounds a little bit sillier. Rectember actually sounds more serious. The thing about October is October can be so scary that you never want to be involved again. Right? 1929, 1987 are filled with really horror stories about people getting really upset. And if we think Bitcoin's going to either 28 or 20, who knows? It could wind up at 17. The thing with October is it's always worse than you think, but for you, that could be better than you think. Because if you've got the capital to take advantage of it, you get altcoins at fair value. That can be something worth hitting the like button on. So on that note, please hit that like button. Because Rocktober is coming, we're not going to give you a hard time about a certain number of likes. We're going to give you altcoin over time anyway because Rocktober is coming and because we love it. Okay? But the more you help us, either by hitting that like button or going over and subscribing to Token Metrics, the more we can help you. So without further ado, I'm going to pull my PowerPoint back up and we're going to do altcoin overtime. And I, I saw somebody asking for Cosmos and Dot. Don't worry, I got you. Right? So let's talk about altcoins and how to play neutral to bullish short term Rocktober, and then beyond that. Now, Luna, Mike Novogratz's favorite. <laughs> Mike Novogratz from Galaxy Digital. I don't know. He's kind of like my crypto hero, right? This is his baby. So this almost to me looks like a one coin market. And Mike's kind of teasing everybody on Twitter saying, don't chase it. And of course, you know, it just continues to go up. So Luna actually hit support around 35. It may go to 46 and it may hit 53. So if there is one big bullish push left, it will probably be led by FOMO in Luna. <laughs> That's funny. Now, people That's in the chat true. have been asking about multivac. If I've got the right symbol here, it looks like 0.022 was like a big resistance point. So yes, I'm taking notes up. right now. So in order for multivac to really do much better, it's wow. actually got to get through its recent high. Now, something I think that could be interesting, even though I just told you that this no one's safe in a bear market. Spotify, guys. It's interesting yeah. that Audius has come back Outcoins down to $2. Cryptocurrency. Which has been really solid support. So I'm looking to say, hmm. hmm. If there was something that I was going to either tuck away at $2 and buy more if it went down, in other words, if there's any such thing as a DCA play, not investment advice, it may be odious. Okay, Ren. Ren. Oh, God, this coin. We were on this coin pounding the table all throughout 2020. And it didn't go up as much as everything else did in DeFi. And then when the market went down, it went from a dollar fifty to twenty, and just I just felt wrecked. I was like, I can't believe how much I like this. This is a bridge. It's a toll bus between Polkadot and Ethereum. I was like, how could this thing go to twenty cents? Well, guess what happens as soon as you <laughs> give up, right? As soon as you say, oh God, you know it's not going to happen. A teacup and handle forms, and off Ren goes. Ren is showing up in our portfolios on Token Metrics 2.0. If there's another push higher, it could go to 1.5 or 1.6 along with the polka dot trade. Now, I don't think you should chase Ren at $1.20, but that doesn't mean that this thing couldn't do a huge catch up trade if there's one last gasp 
higher in this market before October. Okay, sure. people were asking about Dot. Polka dot there so we go. Dot's flying around between 40 and 25. And just like Forrest's analysis, you know, if Dot holds 25, it's okay. Like, it's hard for me to say someone's going to sell Web3 and interoperability. It's crazy, right? It would have to be a really big event for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you that you might be safe in Polkadot, but I just got done telling you that if there's a black swan, no one's safe. So if Polkadot's below 25, be concerned, all right? But it may just range trade for the moment. Now, AVAX. AVAX, there we go. I underestimated this once it got to 60. It turned around and paid a visit to 73 while I was on vacation. Now it's sitting here, and I'm like, hmm, is this thing just going to go? Is it going to be like Solana where it's going to, sit just below resistance and break out and just go and go and go. And everybody who missed it or is afraid to buy it. I didn't miss it, guys. I got Solana. I so sold if, it. If the market has a week left, uh, Luna and AVAX would be the trade. Would I chase mm -hmm. this? No. I, I wouldn't. Okay. But I said that at 60. All right. So if AVAX is above 73 and you're in the mood to FOMO, yeah, carry on. So. Otherwise, if I've been holding this for a long time and I saw a FOMO move with a lot of people coming in late, mm -hmm. I might be inclined to take some money off the table. An old Wall Street model. Nobody ever got fired taking profits. True. Okay. Here Speaking of taking profits. Okay. I helped get our customers out at 200. Even though I drew the line, I was like, God, I'm crazy. This thing's just going to go. I talked about a move to 125, followed Forrest's advice to be patient. It actually went down there. Now it's back at 150. So I guess it's reasonable to assume that if Solana gets back above 150, we can go back to 201, particularly if we've got one bullish week left. But to be perfectly honest with you, because this was a big FOMO trade, I don't know that I'd be necessarily in a huge hurry to jump on this, just like AVEX. It's got room to go up, but I would want yeah. to make sure it takes right, out 150 right now it's 142, before I get to a site. Because again, if I know Evergrande, Evergrande is out there, so do a lot of other people. Now, Elrond, very interesting, thought this might be the next Solana. It took out its old high, Sheesh. it came back down, and it's sitting here. Okay. Very interesting chart. And if there was something that I might be inclined to say, you know what? This might go up because it went up and it came back and is retesting this zone. So mm -hmm. I don't think I would be negative on Elrond. And if I was holding Elrond, not investment advice, you know what? Between now and the start of like Rocktober on October 8th, <laughs> I might give it a chance. Sure. Because if something good could happen in AVAX or Solana, I think it could also happen in Elro. Mm -hmm. So the others I'm more inclined to take profits and the other one, this one I might give it a chance. Okay. Okay, I got that too. DYDX. Yes, sir. A lot of people don't remember that we issued an investment report on DYDX a long time ago, the future of derivatives. Wow. And the analyst who wrote this uh, is now, is now doing really this well one, for guys. himself, right? And I'm really happy for him because he was great, is great still, okay? DYDX has got more volume going on than Coinbase. Now remember, it's derivatives. So if DYDX has got a lot of volume going on, that should tell you something. Right yeah, now, it it's 24.1. It tells you right there's now. support at 18. That was an old high. Mm -hmm. But folks, there may be a lot of hedging going on on DYDX. It's a derivatives exchange. So there's more volume on yes, Coinbase. Sir. But that could be short sellers and hedgers. <laughs> okay? Be careful. So big volume in futures in legacy, often it's like, oh, no, you know. 
the mutual funds, the fidelities, mm -hmm. they're trying to hedge in crypto, especially for these players that put Bitcoin on their balance sheet, there may be a lot of hedging going on. So there's that, yeah, DYDX could hit 18 and go to 30, but there's the real story about what could happen in September. Now, I, I looked at IDEX and I was really interesting, interested to know that above 42 cents, it would come back above the 62% retracement of its recent run-up. So if you were still hunting for like low cap gems that may be beat up, mm -hmm. I found this really interesting. Okay, OMG Network sitting just below resistance. Now, I've seen this before. There's been multiple, multiple chances or multiple tries to take out nine dollars and thirty cents. So if you just if you just can't so not play crypto, like, oh my god! I found something that. <laughs> oh was my like, gosh! I bet if this thing takes out nine thirty, it could go to fourteen. So if there's one last gasp left, and that's an if, okay, up could go OMG. <laughs> Cosmos, Adam. I got that too. Now, huge rally does like a 3x from the bottom, or I'm sorry, a 6x almost. Wow, I missed this and one. And it hits a big GAN line at 44 and comes off. You know what? This is like, this is probably a more... I don't know, a stronger example, AVAX, Solana, Cosmos. Interoperability, layer ones. Great idea, great shades, connectivity, web three. Is Cosmos going to be involved? Yes. yes. If I made five times my money or three times my money in this, in a ver or a 1x in a very short period of time, mm -hmm. I might be tempted to take the money. Okay. You can always, if, if all this is wrong, folks, you can always jump in. It, it didn't hurt you to jump into Solana, right? If you got to jump into trades, you can buy breakouts. Forrest had that like bullish section where it's like, hey, we can jump in. What I don't want you to do is get hurt, and I don't want you to lose profit, mm -hmm. particularly if you had money in Cosmos, AVAX, or Solana. Now, this was my darling, the future of money, QNT. And I'm going to tell you the same thing I told myself. QNT is like a payment system for stable coins or central bank digital currencies. I got cute after the run up. It stopped at 175 and okay. it went to 400. And now, you know what? I'm about to get uncute. All right. This thing had its shot. I think it's good long term. But if this thing gets wrecked, I may be able to get it at 160. So patience is a virtue. Now, with that part of the presentation done, here's one of the things I want to say. While we were on the stream, I got a message from one of the smartest market guys I've ever met. He works in our quant department. And he flagged that two Federal Reserve governors just resigned over an ethics probe about their trading in their personal account. So let me ask you something. I used to work in an investment bank and we were so crystal clear about what we could buy or sell. I mean, they made us take training on it. It felt like every three months. Are we seriously to believe that Federal Reserve governors didn't know what the internal trading policies were. And the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. these guys made millions, probably being leveraged long equities, yep. <laughs> using the worst kept secret in the world that the Fed is printing money and buying stocks at the same time. So if you were a Federal Reserve governor and you made a bunch of money in stocks, wouldn't you sell those stocks to a bunch of Robin Hood traders and quit right before the black swan? <laughs> Is the Federal Reserve not telling you to take care for Rocktober? I'm headed for Idaho. I don't want anybody to get wrecked. If it goes up, 
I'll go with it. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Okay? But as you head into so October, hopefully this video all I want you to do is two things. Get you to I want you, you to know, protect yourself. Get interested. It's kind of a hard sell. Oh, I want taking you to a look at, at Token Metrics. Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency.